Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks uh, for joining us. We, uh, we've got some really good stuff to talk about this morning regarding some thin set materials. So I'm Dave Hamilton and this is Nick Durr. We, uh, we look after the tile and stone portion of, uh, of the Uzen uh, business unit. So today we're gonna talk about um, the, the discussions about CX 30 and 33, but actually we got a little more than that. And when you think about thin sets, it's like, oh gosh, this is a pretty dry subject, just a bunch of cement. So we're gonna try to give you a bunch of information on the technical side, a little bit of history and background on the materials that we have for you guys. And myself, I've been with the company for a little over six years, this is my sixth year with the company and got involved. So I do kind of a dual role. And one of my roles is just the product development side of, of all our systems. Um, been in the industry for gosh, I'm going to date myself now 35 years so um, lots on on the tile and stone side lots on the resilience side i've been involved with malls some airports some high-end residential stuff some aquatic center applications so quite a quite a bit of detail stuff uh over my career but the cool thing is with our industry like you can never uh learn enough so there's always new things to learn so and nick yeah absolutely uh thanks dave been in the industry about 20 years right about now. Uh, been everything from a commercial contractor, distributor rep, and I've worked for a few other manufacturers in the past. Really happy to be here and show you what we have to offer here with Utsin. Our products are some of the best I've ever touched and, and used in the field. So I'm really looking forward to sharing some of that knowledge with you guys today. Awesome, Nick, thanks for that. I'm just gonna make myself, uh, my photo go away here, and then we'll get into the presentation. Uh, how do I do that? Video, okay. Okay, so just quickly about the Uzen Group, if you don't know uh, about us or a whole lot, um, like I said, I've been with the company six years. Uh, great company, like very progressive, and they really focus on installation systems. And the company's been around for like, who knew, uh, over, a, over 100 years. And based out of uh, Ulm, Germany, which is kind of South Central, and then they've got subsidiaries in different countries, including uh, North America. And we, like Nick and I get involved primarily with the Codex group. So the Codex group is just the tile and stone portion, but we have the Uzen group, um, it, that has just the Uzen brand with all kinds of installation systems for resilient flooring, um, for surface preparation, moisture control. We have Wolf, which is all our um, specialty tools, removal tools, super productive things um, for, for installation. Then we have Palman for wood flooring. That's primarily our North American three major brands. And then we have some other brands like Arturo, which is coatings. Um, and then we have RZ, which is maintenance. And then we have Pyrito, which is another tool division. So we've got a little bit of history and some horsepower when it comes to installation and systems. So everything we do goes underneath the floor covering and is about floor covering. So, but really cool company, very progressive, trying to find new unique ways of doing things. And that's what Nick and I have been doing on the tile and stone side trying to look at German technologies, try to find things that are very user-friendly, kind of unique, a little bit different than some of the domestic manufacturers and trying to find our own niche and our own fit in the industry. So, so when I started um, with a company six years ago and building the business plan around the tile and stone product line, we really looked at all the different products in the marketplace and went, oh gosh, there's like 20, every manufacturer has like 20 thin sets. Why is it so confusing? So I had a look at the candy store in Germany and went, you know what, we don't need to have this many. Um, even some manufacturers are still launching more thin sets in the last couple of years. Like some manufacturers are up to 25 thin sets. Like why do we need to make it so complicated. So we tried to, I don't want to say dumb it down, but we just tried to take the best of what we could, which was the very universal uh, approach to, to the marketplace. And not only for our own people, 
but also for our distributors and for contractors, just trying to give them very good value, very good performance, and just trying to keep it simple and very universal to our approach. So the background on our thin sets is, is this. So one thing you'll notice with, and this is just like everything oozing, it's super, super fine. So very fine raw material technologies. Like we use sand that is so fine. Like most manufacturers will use like a sand blend of maybe like a 30 or a 50 or 70 and kind of hybrids of that. This is even finer than that. So all our thin sets are super fine. So what that means for a tile setter is just the outstanding feel, you know, when they try, whether they're troweling the material or cleaning up or wiping down joints or wiping down the edges of the tile, there's just the feel of the material is very unique. And you'll see that too with our, with our levelers, with our patching compounds, our repair materials are also very fine. The same thing goes with all our thin set technologies. The other thing is that we have, you know, people will ask us, hey, do you have anything for as, you know, for, for thick bed installation or do you have anything for, for larger format tile? It's like, yeah, uh, we can go either really thin notch trowels for installing glass mosaics or mosaics in general, or we can go thicker. So we so it, it's more universal in its approach for smaller tile or larger format tile or even some of the, the porcelain pavers and porcelain panel systems. All polymer modified, we don't have any liquid latexes that you have to worry about another component, so it's all water add system. Um, and because of the fineness in the raw materials we and, and the water demands, we also get more coverage. So very, very good. Sag resistant technology, I'll show you some pictures here in a bit. And all recommended um, for any kind of membrane systems or uncoupling systems. So also universal in that approach. So let's dig into this a little bit more. So let's talk about non-sag here just really quickly. And this is one attribute that you'll find with oozen, oozen thin sets. And in terms of testing, the industry benchmark, believe it or not, in the testing parameters of, of ANSI is actually a four and a quarter by four and a quarter wall tile. So, which is not even near reality for today's job site. So when we do our testing and our development, we do a lot of our non-sag testing on 12 by 24 by three eighths inch thick porcelain. So, and our goal is to try and have, have less than an eighth of an inch of sag in uh, a tile of this size. So what you'll see with our products is that not that they're, they're, they're not sag resistant, they're non-sag. Like they're really that good in terms of their ability to hold tile either on floors where you need support and you need to move it a little bit to balance with some of the irregularities in the substrate or on walls. So in this case, you can still use, it's still, you know, like a lot of guys still use, um, spacers and tile jacks to position it, you can still do that, but what you'll get is really good workability properties with the material. So in a nutshell, CX20 will do pretty much 90% of what you need in the industry. So it's a fairly universal product. It's not an entry level by any means, even though it's our entry level product, it's not an entry level thin set by any means. It's got a lot of performance, characteristics, and I'll show you this in a bit. It's a non-sag material. It's got good bond strength. We can use it on plywood. We can use it interior. We can use it exterior. We can use it on large format. We can use it on small mosaics, like I said. So for most conditions, it does what you need to do. And when you jump up into the other two, what you're getting is a couple things. So you're getting a higher degree of polymer content. So we take like a dry powder polymer, when it wets out, it turns into a glue and it provides more adhesion and it provides what we call as, there's a category called S1 flexibility. So what this means is you have more fatigue resistance and more ability to move with the substrates and move with the tile. And we get into exterior conditions and more high performance applications, um, you'll have better performance attributes out of CX30. So 
there's a jump in there's a jump in polymer content and in dollars accordingly and raw materials to go to 30 and then when you go to 33 we then start using some other technologies and also better drying out and it's more of a rapid set version of 30 so we get higher early strength quicker performance faster so you can walk on it but you still get good elasticity and good flexibility in the material Another thin set that we have that we don't talk about enough is TR400. This is a two component resin based. It's not an epoxy, it's a polyurethane. So it's got tremendous performance and we use it for specialty applications and is part of our Balka Slim um, decking system. And you might have, we had a webinar on that uh, um, a couple months ago. So we can, we can use this in all kinds of ultra high performance areas um and it's just a different material altogether and we'll talk about that a little bit so in a nutshell that's our system so we cover pretty much the the entire industry with four products instead of 25. okay another thing we like to talk about is dollars per square foot so whether you're on the ooze and self-leveling side or the ooze and priming side a lot of stuff we you know we have this it's a bit of a disease in our industry and a little bit of a foot race to hell where everybody is afraid to sell quality and you know everything is well what's your price what's your price per bag uh well these guys are at this price well you're at this price and you know what when it when it comes down to it you got to look at the full um criteria you know you got to look at your coverage you got to look at the feel of the material how do i like this material does it have great sag resistance does it have great feel does it have good performance um, does it have good coverage you know we're in 40 pound bags instead of 50 so it makes it easier to lift the material easier to stack on a dolly and transport you know lots of different little things and when you come down to breaking down the cost per square foot and for our canadian friends if you add another 25 to 30 percent um, for the exchange and some duties, this yet that would be where your numbers. But this is typical distributor selling price, give or take a little bit. And after you factor in the coverage, we're talking pennies per square foot. You know, to move from CX 20 to CX 30, you could look at it and go, "Well, wow, that's way more money." But when you break it down with your extra coverage, it's not a lot. So. Please, I, I really, um, you know, I can't say it enough to when you're talking about installation materials, really look at the dollars per square foot as opposed to the uh, price per bag. So part of this discussion, and we're going to kind of cycle now into some of the installation best practices and talking about, because I was involved in the industry association inspection committees for years and man some of the failures that i saw was was just shameful and and very unnecessary because you know as a trade we learn so much from other people and we don't necessarily um learn a lot of best practices so nick if i can get you to jump in here a little bit and and just chat about some of the things that you saw as a contractor and things that are very necessary to make sure a tile installation goes over uh, successfully if you could just jump in here and take over that'd be great absolutely thanks dave appreciate it you know one of the things in the in the tile trades or in the trades in general is we're taught by the person we learn from the person we work with so you know i learned from a guy whose you know father worked in the tile industry so when they were in a room together we had about 60 years of installation experience and what i found is you know what was passed down is what was gospel that's what you knew and as tiles have gotten bigger, we've had to ask new questions. You know, now tile, any tile that's over 15 inches on one edge is going to be considered large format. You know, back in the day, 20, 30 years ago, eight by eights and 12 by 12s were considered that. We didn't have to worry about much of our substrates. Now we do. So we talk about that. You know, we need an eighth and 10 feet with a large format tile. So what do we need to do? We can use a traditional mortar bed, mud bed on that, but we don't have the labor that knows how to do that anymore. That's where we as Utine comes in. We have the products that do that, the primers and sealers that allow us to put that floor flat is desired, level is the is is ideal, but it's very expensive. Most people won't do that. So flat's required, 
level is desired, but that's not what we always see. So we have a bunch of patching and leveling compounds that allow us to get that to that eighth and 10 feet. So an eighth of an inch or a 16th and two feet. That's very hard to hit from the guys pouring concrete or walking into a, a wood floor. Do we have any deflection or movement? We have wood floors at 16 on center, is it 24 on center? We may now have to add some, some extra layers of plywood to make that work for a tile installation. We need L over 360 or L over 720. Uh, on concrete. Do we have any cracks already in the floor? The old saying is, you know, there's two types of concrete. Concrete that's cracked and concrete that hasn't yet. And we have to address that. We do have the uh, HS100 and 200 materials that can actually go over there and do some anti-fracture for us. And then priming. That's something that in the tile world we're not as familiar with. So when you come into a company like Utsin that's been priming things for a very long time. Do we have a thirsty substrate? Well, that's going to rob that moisture out of your thin set and make it not perform right. We can prime for a few pennies a square feet and a foot and not have that worry. Um, are we going tile over tile? We have a primer called 280. That is excellent. It actually has a grit already into it. It's a roll on. Uh, we're even going to recommend that for in a shower tile over tile. If we have the right opportunity, that product will hold up in a wet condition too. Most of those products do not. And then we also have to look at our job site conditions on is it hot or cold? If it's hot, we need to try to cool it down, cool water um, mixing. If it's really cool, everything's gonna slow down and not set up as fast. So we have to take all those things into account when we start talking about best practices for installation. So moving to when we actually start wanting to place that, we need to key in our mortar burn it into the substrate as, as a lot of guys talk about it. That's taking the flat side of the trowel and putting that product in there to make sure that we have a clean substrate, we're getting a, a good bond to it. I've, I've seen jobs where guys literally just trowel right over uh, what's there, they don't burn it in and, and that thin set literally will come off with the tile. It'll bond to the tile, but not the floor. Uh, there could be a bonding agent or something on there, a disbonding agent on there. Uh, we're gonna trowel in one direction. Uh, especially with large format. We have uh, tiles now that are six foot by 10 foot or five foot by 10 foot roughly, large porcelain panels. We have to think about this a little differently. We need to trowel directionally in one way so that we actually can collapse those ridges and not trap air. And we also want to back butter. Back buttering is with the flat side of the trowel on the back of the tile. It's a very easy process, but it's one that's overlooked by a lot of at least commercial installers. I think we see it more residentially than we do commercially, but it also makes sure that if there is some kiln dust on the back of that tile that we're making sure we're getting a good bond to it. That's one of the bigger bond breakers in tile and stone is that dust on the back. And then as we're installing, we also wanna check our transfer, our thin set transfer from tile to the mortar, to the floor or wall or ceiling, 85% uh, interior and then 95% exterior in, in wet areas or better. So those are the goals we're always trying to hit when we're, we're doing our installation. And a lot of guys don't do this, but they should start practicing every fourth, fifth or sixth tile, depending on how big they are. Check your coverage, make sure you're hitting those numbers. If we prep our substrate right, we're gonna use less thin set, we're gonna have better coverage, we're gonna have an overall flatter and better installation. So talking about our products specifically, what are they? We have the advanced performance and, and feel. So we're trying to get with CX30 that higher end, higher performance installation. And it, it'll do virtually anything, interior, exterior, immersion, vertically. Um, we have a great drying and green strength. What's that actually mean? With CX30, I get a pot life of two and a half hours. That's a, that's a long time on a job site to be able to go back and keep that thin set working for us. Uh, I have an open time of 20 to 30 minutes. And then here's one that really does help. This isn't a rapid mortar, but on walls, I can be grouting in six hours. And on floors, I can be grouting in 12 hours. We always joke in the tile world, because a, a tile setter's 24 hours is if I leave the job site at 3 p.m., when I'm back on that job site at 7 a.m., that's that's 24 hours and I'm starting to move on. Our product, this product actually allows us to do that. I have that higher polymer content with that S1 from the ISO, uh, C2TES1. So it's a high performance, non-SAG uh, product. It gives us extending working time properties as well. 
So these are awesome. The feel on the trowel is going to be so smooth. Guys are going to feel like they're working less, which is also helpful in keeping guys being productive on a job site. So where are we using this? We're using this with all these large format. Again, 15 inches on one edge. Right here we see probably two foot by four foot porcelain panels um, over a waterproof membrane. So we can do this. They're doing the ceilings, they're doing the walls. This is great to, to if I have to build up that substrate a little bit, I can go up to three eighths of an inch and build without having any issues with shrinkage on this material. Uh, that allows us to fill in some of those voids. As you can see on the picture on the left, they actually had to build out some of that on top of the membrane. We'd like to see most of that done and behind the membrane, but there are times where you just catch it later and you have to deal with it. Yeah, and we have variable water ratio in our uh, thin sets as well, hey Nick? Absolutely. So if I'm working on walls, I'm probably going to go to the lower or middle range of the water. And if I'm working on floors, I'll go to uh, the high range of water and make that flow a little easier. Uh, but the, the fine aggregate in our thin sets actually make that a much easier process to spread. So the porcelain panels, I don't know if you guys are seeing it. I am starting to see more and more of this. I was involved in some really great projects uh, in a previous life with these, and, and that was pretty early on in the porcelain panels. Now you're starting to see these instead of wallpaper, uh, they're going everywhere. And we're seeing more of them on the floor. That bottom right is a car dealership. You gotta imagine, we have to have that 95% coverage in something like that because of that point load when those tires are turning on top of it. It is a challenging environment. So we wanna step up from our everyday mortar and move to a CX-30 or better. So moving on to our CX-33, this is gonna be our rapid set. Quick renovation, return to service we, we're going in at night we're got to tear out an area and redo it kitchens bathrooms entries uh, one of the beautiful things about this product is we have extremely reliable set times uh, even on our older material I, I tried a bag here last week that was almost two years old and it's still set at two and a half hours that's pretty hard to do i don't know many other manufacturers that that can actually state that with old old rapid sets one of the other things is a lot of the rapid sets that most distributors have on their shelves aren't going to be a non-sag medium bed like our product is. All of our thin sets are that way, and it really does help us to uh, set ourselves apart from our competition. Again, super fine materials in here, so working with the trowel is very smooth. I have a nice working time of about 45 minutes. That's true with my pot life, and then my open time on the floor when I spread it is going to be 20 minutes. I have more adjustability with this product than our competition once I place it. A lot of our competitive products get very stiff very early on once they're actually out of the bucket and on the floor. Ours actually had a very nice adjustment period uh, that most of our competitors weren't able to do. This is ideal for glass tile installations and natural stones. And we have the, uh, again, we have the ability to tailor the water to your project. So uh, at our high water range, great for floors. At our middle to low water range, great for walls and ceilings. You know, Nick, one question we get asked is about our bags. You know, we use paper bags and people think that that's a negative. And what people don't understand actually is that uh, it's actually a plastic bag too. And if you take, take apart or you cut into, um, any of our bags, whether it be our self levelers or our thin sets, um, it's actually paper, plastic, and paper. So it is actually a plastic bag. It's just the plastic is is uh, covered on both sides with a very high density paper, and then it's sealed in the factory. So we don't have any open valves; they're all sealed valves. So it's pretty tight, and we get really good aging and and material protection. So you know, whether you're in kind of a wet climate like I am in the in the Pacific Northwest um, or just throwing bags into the back of the vehicles, they're actually quite robust and you don't have to worry about them. You might tear some of the paper, but it's a lot more robust than you think. That's a great, great point, Dave. And, and that's true with all of our products here. Um, 
The only one that's going to be different when we move into our grout or extra colors actually in a foil bag that has a, a shelf life that's insane at four years. So uh, we, we really do take care and think about what the contractor's needs are when we think about the bag and packaging for this. And, and that goes with our 33 as well. That's going to be in a 27 and a half pound bag. So it's not too much. It's the right amount for a rapid set. A lot of times we get a 50 pound bag and you start mixing smaller amounts and, and it's just kind of a pain. Where this bag is a nice size, it seems to handle most of your projects. And when, when you are doing this type of work with the, the Rapid, you wanna be in and out. And, and that's what this product will provide you. Again, gray is gonna be about two and a half hours. White's gonna be a little longer at three to four hours. So one of the benefits when we talk about CX-33 is it has a, a lower pH level. So it works great with stone. We have an alkaline number between eight and nine, and, and it also adds that it's gonna have less potential reaction to some of the stones out there. And it's easier to work from uh, with your skin. It's not gonna cause you to have as much of the issues with the cement burn that we see with some other products. And also help with the picture framing, and shading and dark spots when we talk about drying out. That's one thing we do see with a lot of natural stones is that they hold on to that moisture or at least broadcast it through depending on how transparent they are. So move, moving to a rapid mortar like CX-33 gives you a better chance of success and allows you to keep that project moving on a little faster. Glass tile, we see it every day. Um, that's where CX-33 and even 30 really come into play they they like that they allow that substrate and that glass to be moving at different rates and not disbond glass is very dense it can crack with brittle thin sets i don't know how many times i've gotten the call that around the fireplace and they didn't use the right higher quality thin set and and that tile will crack because of that heat and and that movement that's happening that we don't see but in, in glass it becomes very apparent when that heat and that transfer happen uh, over time and, and it could be so bad that if the tile is large enough it could pop off. Um, we also need to allow extra expansion when we talk about glass so making sure that we do have expansion joints that all changes the planes and, and changes uh, uh, the corners and changes the planes. So the ISO S1 Flex allows everything to move. We have the extremely fine aggregate. We have a nice bright white coloring so it does project that true color of the glass well and then we have that also the fine material for troweling it out and then laying it down. So it's a very nice and smooth textured material for an installer. It's a great product. The feel is really important, especially when we're working with these glass mosaics. They can get a little finicky. I wanna be able to move things around and, and these products really do allow you to do that. Nick, I know you, you just covered a lot of it there, but maybe just recap uh, a little bit on some of the real values of 33. You yeah, know. so what is it we're looking at? We got that reliability and curing and drying out. It's not marketing, guys. We do test this. Like I said, I had a two-year-old bag in the training center since we haven't seen uh, our customers at that uh, training facility in a little over a year. Found it in the back corner, mixed it up, said, you know what, this is a pretty good example of what might be sitting on somebody's shelf uh, from a rapid testing standpoint. Uh, it allows us to get quicker turnarounds. Backsplashes are a huge one. If I can get in and get out in one day versus making it a two-day project, I'm on to the next job making that money again. Uh, no fear with membranes or uncoupling systems, that's huge. The, our products are gonna be that self-drying technology that allow that to happen. We have those high early strengths. We're not gonna break bond on the tiles of the next day if I'm in there cleaning out the grout joints. Ability to do patchwork and rendering up to three eighths of an inch. Uh, more working time uh, equals less waste on the job site. I don't know how many times you know you, you got a phone call, you walked away from the, the bucket of mud and when you came back, it was so stiff, you couldn't remix it, you couldn't retemper it. You had to throw that bucket out and start over. Great feel, again, we have that really nice fine texture and it's easier on our hands. And then again, guys, we can use this for virtually all type, thin bed, medium bed, floors, walls, ceilings, glass, porcelain, and stone. It really is that, that one product that can do it all for us. Maybe just talk about TR400 a little bit, Nick, if you don't mind. Absolutely. 
Guys, this this is a a monster of a product, and I mean that in the best way. We've worked with, uh, at least I've worked with a lot of epoxies in the past that get put through some of these harsh environments, and none of them perform the way this product does. This product is a two part, so I do actually have to to mix the two pieces together. But once that's done, I have a nice product that works extremely well. Uh, it goes through the trowel almost like there's no aggregate in it. Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if there is much aggregate in this material. And it, it, it works in exterior environments. And, and the most challenging thing about exteriors is when we talk about water intrusion into our mortar bed. And that's our setting bed as well. So with this product, it being a urethane, the water doesn't absorb in there. There's no salt, soluble salts to actually dry to pull out to bring that efflorescence that we can see with exterior installations. And this also pairs extremely well on decks. Uh, this is a little different installation, but we have our bulky slim system that might be the thinnest, easiest exterior deck system that I have ever put my hands on in the industry. I've seen a lot of systems out there. Most require an unbonded mortar bed with a drainage mat underneath. All of a sudden we're at two and a half, three inches thick where with the right materials, this product can be, you know, uh, what an eighth of an inch dave is it much thicker than that oh yeah it can go it can go really thin or it can go thicker it's uh it's and it's it's you asked about does it have any uh aggregate in it? it's it's we use a really like a calcium carbonate really fine filler almost kind of like a marble dust filler in it so it gives you that kind of mastic feel uh and workability and it's also, um, it has no absorption rate. So it is a polyurethane material. So once you've, you've got your, you know, you've got your 90% uh, or greater transfer, you can't really get water underneath the tile. So the, it just keeps it almost waterproof from under the tile and allows for the, the, the water to not sit dormant and affect the installation, it'll wick its way out. So any water that gets in is more topically draining than it is getting into the material and causing all kinds of, you know, either freeze thaw or expansionary issues due to heat, um, you know, destroying the material over, over time. So it's really super robust for a lot of different ultra high performance um, conditions. So it's been, you know, we've got some, exterior work now that you know it'll hit uh minus 20 minus 30 minor minus 40 celsius and they're they've been down for years so very very reliable material the only thing is it's it's not a water cleanable material so you have to use our ooze and clean wipes with it and you just got to be a little bit meticulous and clean as you go but as far as the the finished product and the concerns of our industry with efflorescence, with latex leaching, with um, long-term performance and degradation. Like we have a, a lot of people that won't touch exterior installations. I had one uh, tile contractor say to me, the best deck you do is the one you don't do. And that's kind of the mantra with a lot of people. And uh, we'd like to, to change that um, mindset and be able to sell more tile exterior and do more work exterior because the the technology is there now it's just different yeah please please reach out to us with any questions on this guys we love to be out on your job sites we love to work with your teams and crews to uh, make sure they're having success with our products sometimes they're a little different than our competition and and that's a good thing but we do have to uh, kind of explain that and show guys on a job site and every one of our reps across the country are, are ready and, and willing to be out there and we're working every day with contractors distributors to to be there so we've talked a lot we we covered some technical things so we hope um you know you get a, a little bit better insight to kind of where our heads at and where we're going with our our thin set division um we are looking at at some other new technology stuff and like i said looking at um evolving and and continue to improve what we have and develop some unique propositions for for guys we've got some some other new recommendations coming up we've got some new new grouting systems coming up um, over the course of this uh, the year so expect to see more of us you know we started off this little division 
five years ago and we're just continuing to evolve in it and continue to make it grow and and help people get more done in a day and and you know have a, a very reliable user-friendly experience with our system so with that if um, there's some questions you want to throw at us we'd be more than happy happy otherwise uh we can uh we can adjourn for sure we just wanted to keep this kind of short and sweet with you guys yeah one of the questions was uh when the when is the new plant going to be uh completed right now the the core work is being done hopefully they'll be pouring slabs soon we're we're hoping to be open by uh i think it's june of of next year and and opera fully operational if not before but you know that's all uh all, all dependent on the construction timelines and as everybody knows those those are a moving target um yeah so cx33 gray dry is faster than white is that correct yeah yes it is and and you know we're kind of taking the german technology that doesn't perfectly align to what we're doing here in the u.s but what what dave has been able to do is take products that are very similar in, in germany and in europe they don't have gray and white of just one product. They have different products and white is typically for stone only. So when we're bringing them together, we're pairing up two products that, that are very identical in most attributes. And as you see us harmonize products for the US, that'll probably go away. Yeah, that's true. And we had that when we kicked off 30 a few years ago, we had, uh, we had 30 gray as a regular set and the white we had to choose from was was more of a rapid set, so we had we had that issue, and it took us uh, a year ish or a couple years to get that harmonized. And I see the next thing will be um, on the 33. So the upside is you got a little more working time. Um, the set time is a little bit slower, but not horribly so. So they're they're pretty close in nature, but there is a little bit of difference between the uh, the gray and the white with 33. Good question. Absolutely. Um, you know, I just want to reiterate one more thing about the priming, guys. It's it's not a it's not first nature for a tile guy to say I want to put a primer on a floor. And I think about all my my years installing and how many times a primer would have given us better results from a curing standpoint, a workability standpoint, and and we have those products. We have uh, what three main ones. We have our two sixty our 280 and our new 360 plus uh, from a tile guy who who has a, a thirsty substrate that doesn't understand what that is and doesn't want to dilute anything our 360 is a great product to hand out there tile over tile we have our 280 it has that aggregate or not aggregate it has carbon fiber technology in it to create a really strong bond and, and allows us to go tile over tile like i even said into a, a wet shower setting uh, locker rooms, all those things. So if we have well-bonded tiles. We have solutions to make that turnaround much faster than tearing everything out. Yeah, because there's some there's some other kind of grip primers like that in the industry as well, but they just take forever to dry where you can be on top of, of 280 primer, gosh, in 45 minutes. So whether yeah. you're doing tile over tile on a floor or even columns and that kind of thing, it just gives you that gripping property because what is thin set? It, it's a cement based adhesive and you get these little mechanical anchors that come out of cement materials and they hook on to each other and they create a hard matrix, but they also hook onto substrates and they hook onto tiles. So the coarser the surface you can have, the better gripping properties and the better performance you're gonna have with thin sets. So that's the value. And that's why 280 is, we call it a 280 texture primer, because it's almost like creating a bit of an artificial profile, you know, instead of shot blasting or grinding, you're doing it with a liquid material um, that has incredible bond strength. As like Nick said, it's non-reemulsifiable. So if it gets a little bit of water into it, it's not gonna wash out or deteriorate. And that's something you'll see change in the future with our recommendations um, because we've got some waterproofing technology in the bucket of 280. So it's just another another tool in the toolbox you can use for certain situations. And another primer that we have that's the other best kept secret in the industry is 414 polyurethane. What if you run into a situation that came up the other day with somebody like, what if I have a metal plate? Um, that I have to tile over, or I got a call, um, I have to put um, 
a metal medallion in the middle of the floor. Well, flip it over. You can roll on some 414. You can broadcast sand into it. Takes two hours to set, vacuum that up, and then you can set it. And it gives you that gripping property and protects the metal from getting tarnished. So we've got a few other tools in the toolbox that can help you with some of these things if you run into it. Um, that's there to help. So well, I think with that, we've answered every question that uh, I've seen pop up. Uh, I thank you all for taking your time today to uh, listen to this. If you have questions, reach out to us. We're all available. Your local reps are ready uh, to answer all your questions. Again, get out on job sites, even sample out some material to show you guys the difference from what you're using now and what you could be using with us. Yeah, well said, Nick. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your day, and we'll have more of these kind of video chats and uh, technical things to come uh, throughout the year periodically. So thanks again.